Working hard, working hard to get my fill. Everybody wants a thrill. So if you have that, we have a we have like an One, arrangement. Two, three. Working, working hard to get my fill. It's such a simple concept and yet so popular. Amateur singers who, in an evening, become a joyous pop-up choir. Like a lot of great ideas, it started by accident. This one at a birthday party for a friend. On the count of three, everyone take a nice deep breath. One, two, three. Hold it in for eight minutes. <laughs> Noble Edelman and David Goldman perfected choir, choir, choir at Toronto bars, eventually landing theater shows, even a spot on US TV along the way attracting the attention of some big stars. Everybody, David Byrne. They've crisscrossed North America and are about to embark on a tour of the UK. I sat down with Nobu and David at one of their old venues, Clinton's Tavern in Toronto. At what point did you guys know you had a thing? This idea of ordinary people getting together, being led through a song, how captivating it was, but, but when did you realize it was going to work? We've had, I think we've had many different phases of that. You know, after the first official choir, choir, choir night, it was held at a friend's real estate office. At the end of the night, you know, we literally had no plan. At the end of the night, we said, oh, we'll do this in a few months again at some point, you know, and people were like, no, tomorrow. And then we ended up doing it every single week for a year before we started doing it twice a week. So that was probably the first night where we realized, oh, that really went well. But as much as it went well, we still basically have no plan. And, uh, but we knew early on, like within a couple of weeks, it was clear that I didn't know what it was going to become, but it was clear that there was something there. So there are a handful of amazing moments along the way for choir, choir, choir. How many times do I have to say that? Just CCC or something? And Every know. single time say choir, choir, choir. Okay. Um, and, and one of them is Rick Astley. Call me David, 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 by the way, in case <laughs> okay, David, you don't David, mind. David. Um, so Rick Astley, yeah. you, you got him to walk in here. How, how did that even come about? He was walking by, and <laughs> no, no, it, Nobu was actually away that week, and I and and I was like, I should do it. Like, we're never going to give you up. I had seen that Rick Astley was on tour, so we did this night here. Hey, Rick Astley, we want you to come and sing with us. We're choir, choir, choir. We will sing with you. We love your music. We celebrate music, and you have some wicked songs, man. So I kind of dared him to come and sing with us. He, he sends me the footage. I'm in Paris at the time, and I edited it together. And we put the video out. And by the time I got back from my trip, our... Rick Astley's team had gotten in touch and were like, we'll come by. Wow. And on the, and the night of, we're here. The, the bar is packed with people. They're so excited because we said, like, Rick's going to be here. Hi, guys. Let's go have a sing song. Come on. We taught the arrangement. Rick's not in the room. And then right at the moment, we're like, all right. Everybody, Rick Astley, he comes walking through the bar, walks through the crowd on stage. We do the song. We haven't even spoken to him. He just, one take, he nailed it. His voice was amazing. And then he's like, all right, I'm done. And we're like, can we do it one more time? You know, we need a few more camera angles. But it was, it was that easy. The other thing that's really striking about that video for me is how much people who were singing, the ordinary people who were, I guess, standing around here, how much joy they had. They just loved it. What is it about what you guys do, what they do, that brings so much joy, do you think? I mean, music really matters to people. Not to everybody, but to a lot of people, it matters almost as much as anything. Like, music to people is like a part of who they are. You know, so to invite people into a room and celebrate these songs in what I think is the best possible way to celebrate them is to sing them and make them a beautiful new thing. Um, people just love it and they, people love celebrations. It's like a birthday party for the song. But it's not just the song, right? It's the Absolutely. act of singing together. Uh, people love to share. I think that it's just in our DNA and I think that sharing the experience. You, you sing, a lot of people sing in their car or in the shower, but then when they, when they realize when they can share that and they don't have to be the best singer in the room, they can get together and the, the, the kind of space that we create, which is no auditions, just show up, just sing, have fun, as much fun as you can. Um, a lot of things happen and 
It's about being shoulder to shoulder with people. It's about hearing the harmonies creep in slowly, realizing that you could be part of something like that. It, it can be overwhelming at times at just how much joy we also collectively feel together. Watching some of the videos, I sense like heavily weighted towards women. You have a lot more women than men. Is that something you see in your shows generally? We only let a certain way. percentage of men allowed yeah. are allowed to come to a certain <laughs> night. You know, so you it's like a to, nightclub. Every every club has its rules. That's right. You know, we have we've hired bouncers specifically. <laughs> that we're like let certain attractive men in. No, I mean it. I mean I think the vulnerability, as Nobu said, people want to share. They want to be vulnerable, which is only partly true. I think we've, you know, people want to be in that kind of space, but we try to unlock that in them through humor and through, you know, whatever we're doing, we create that space that allows them to be vulnerable with people around them. And men are just not as open to doing that. A, a lot of guys show up to our shows because they've been dragged there by their partners or, you know, they've just found themselves there and you can tell that they don't really want to be there. Mm -hmm. But then the humor aspect of our show is so huge. And then David just goes off on these rants that make them feel included, so they're laughing, their guards are down, and then by the end of the show, they're singing along just as loudly as whoever they came with, which I yeah, love, <laughs> I yeah, love seeing like, that. I mean, he talks a good game, but the reality is, and I believe this to be true, that certainly for me, that if we didn't run choir, 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 and someone's like, we should go to this night, they're singing, there's two guys yeah. who tell you what to sing, I'd be like, that's okay, yeah. like, I don't know. So you guys are obviously funny, you're creative, you get along really well together, but at the heart of all of this is your musical ability. And, and no less than David Byrne, uh, of formerly of Talking Heads, described you as, I think, a, like a great conductor. <laughs> what, He's I, a strange man. <laughs> he says crazy things. That's... What makes you a great conductor? I mean, you'd have to ask David oh, Byrne, okay. for sure. Cut um, to... <laughs> <laughs> Um, he wrote that in the postscript of our performance with him in New York, and I was on the floor because you know I have a lot of respect for him as an artist. Um, I, I I don't know. I, I think that I'm. I think. I mean, maybe David can answer this better than I can. But I'm very expressive with my face, with my body. I, I've never been in a choir before. I've, I've played instruments my whole life and been in bands, but I've never stood out in front of people and sort of like triggered when they're gonna sing and that kind of thing and try to get different tones and different things like that. So your early style was described by you as boneless chicken. Boneless chicken, yeah. It's not in any textbook, but uh, it's just my, I didn't know what to do with my arms, like a conductor, and I had no idea what I, to do. I felt awkward. And know? I was like, like, oh my God, what is he doing? <laughs> no, and, and when, I, when I look at choirs who are just starting out, I see them and I feel their pain because they're like, they're like, All right, everyone. they're kind of like Djokovic, like after he wins a match, you know, it's just, you know, it's like, what do you do with your body? It's hard to be definitive about this, but I think, I think, and, and you guys think, you're the first to do this in the way that you do it, right? Uh, yeah. Like I mean, we, groups have sung before, obviously, together, right? Amateurs have sung before, but there's, you, what you guys do is, it, it may be unique, or, or not, if not unique, when you started it, it was unique. We started in 2011, and, I, and, and, and it was, you know, we started doing these nights, and we would record it on an iPhone, but then it sort of evolved, the nights got bigger. We were getting so much attention, seemingly, from local media, and, whatever, and I was like, how are we, the, I, I would be Googling, like, choir, like, you know, like Im just like impromptu, like video, like New York, T Tokyo, London, anywhere. So give me figuring there's got to be someone doing this kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I would say to Nova, like, I don't think there's anyone else in the world doing what we do. And f I don't know for some reason I was so proud of that. Yeah, Not because absolutely. we were like, we came up with an idea, but just because we happened to in some way stumble upon something we really love doing that no one else was doing. I mean, subsequently, there are people doing what we do and they were inspired by us, which is great. Is it great? It's half great. <laughs> because I'm curious about that too, right? I, I, I don't know if you, I mean, we could call them copycats. We could call them inspired by choir, choir, choir. Mm -hmm. uh, but I mean, yeah, we have, you we must have, have mixed we have, we have different ideas about it. You go first. I mean, I, you know, I'm of two minds. Like in one, in one sense, I'm like proud that we created something that means enough to people that there are other people who are like, oh, we should do something like that here and it, it becomes successful or there's varying degrees of success. But at the same time, I think of this as like our baby and like I think of it as like something that we like just worked so hard to build up. 
you know, if someone sees it and says, oh, that's a great idea, two people on stage with 2,000 people, let's get, and there's some money behind it, they can kind of make it happen, which is great. But I just know how long we spent to yeah. get to that point, organic growth, which I think is why our performance is so sharp. I, I appreciate the honesty. Um, but I guess another part of that, though, is you can feel confident that you maybe have created a genre. Yeah, I, you know, I, I feel that nobody owns singing. You know, I think that um, whenever I get anxious messages from David about, you know, some of his deep research that he does about other choirs and what they're doing, I'm just like, no one is going to do it the way we're doing it. This is DIY. This is about the creatives figuring out a way for them, for how to, how to exercise their creativity and figure it out on their own, come up with their own arrangements. When we first started doing arrangements, it was David and I listening to a song, singing parts in the margins to each other, recording the parts on an iPhone, showing up to whatever venue we were doing it at and trying to figure it out in the moment. And it was that sweat and it was that kind of just no roadmap that I find as a creative person very exciting. And so the soul of choir I feel is born out of that. So any other choir that they're doing it, I hope that they're doing it, if they're copying what our model, I hope that they're taking that route because then that means that they're having an authentic experience. So I can't buy the Vancouver franchise, apparently. Talk to us in five years, <laughs> because uh, in five years we might be willing to do that. <laughs>